Hello Makers! Welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I'm going to give you my official review of the Tronxy P802MA. Stick around! Welcome back Makers! So it's time for me to close this chapter in the Tronxy saga on this channel. It's been quite a ride. I've had this printer now for just over four weeks. I started it off with an unboxing and the live build. I also had a power cut in the live build because of a faulty power supply, which will haunt me for the rest of my YouTube life, apparently. <laughs> I also uploaded an initial thoughts video on the Tronxy because I thought it merits a bit of recognition for the print quality it was producing. In the meantime, I did a few upgrades. So you've seen the upgrades I did on the Z-axis mounts up here with the bearings, just to remove any slack there was on the Z-axis rods. And I also replaced the X-axis mounts for the stepper and the idler on the other side. Those were pretty much it. The other small addition that I did was I installed thumb wheels just to make it easier for me to level the bed. Once I did those, I started testing out. So the first thing I did was I printed a Benchy and I printed it in Rigid Ink PLA. It came out, well, it actually came out quite well. Granted, there's uh, a few, uh, there's a bit of over extrusion, nothing major. It was pretty much settings that it needed to have fixed. And I was quite pleased with that. So what I did then, I adjusted the settings. I threw in some filamentum vertigo gray PLA and I printed another Benchy. And this possibly is the most perfect Benchy I've ever printed so far. Not only does it look awesome, it bridging printed perfectly, details are great. The first layer is almost flawless. It was the first time I printed a Benchy where I could read the bottom uh, letters on the Benchy and I was extremely happy with that. So then I wanted to print, I, I wanted to start really testing this printer. So I printed this horse which I found on my mini factory. I printed this in 0.2 millimeter layer height. I put the speed up to I think was about 50 millimeters a second. And lo and behold, this thing is absolutely amazing. It came out, uh, the world I'm thinking of is flawless. It's not flawless, but it's close to it. It came out absolutely great. I couldn't ask for anything better out of this printer. Once that was done, I decided to um, throw in some Polymaker Polywood because I wanted to see how it fares with a different kind of material. I, I didn't use special filaments on this printer. The simple reason being that I still have not received a replacement power supply. I, I don't think I ever will from AliExpress. So I didn't want to uh, increase the temperatures more than I really wanted, more than I really felt that it was safe. But I found ahead of the thing and I printed it in Pollywood and it came out glorious. I love it. I absolutely love it. it I, I couldn't, once again, I couldn't ask for better print quality out of this particular printer. It printed out really well and I was very, very, very happy with it. Last but not least is a print I started yesterday. I wanted to give this printer a bit more of a challenge than I have done so far. And that was to print this dragon. Not a frog, not a lizard, a dragon, <laughs> Chinese dragon. <laughs> this thing has an insane amount of supports in it. I printed it in Filamentum Greengrass PLA Extra Fill. It was printed at 0.15 millimeter layer height and also at 45 millimeters a second. 
Now, while the supports came out rather nicely, the print quality eh, leaves a lot to be desired. There is a couple of layers where there was a bit of under extrusion. I'm not quite sure if that was me um, messing up the retraction settings. But other than that, it's not half bad. I've seen much worse prints than this from much more expensive machines. So it's, I wasn't disappointed at all. I think it fared fairly, fairly well. So if it was a person, I'd give it a pat on the back for, for effort, A for effort, definitely. So where does that leave me with the Tronxy? Um, with every 3D printer, there's the good, the bad, and sometimes there's the ugly. With the Trong C, the good points are that it's cheap. It's a 180 euro printer, so there's not much you can expect out of that. However, at 180 euros, you get quite a decent build volume. You get auto leveling. You get a decent Melzi clone board. So there's not much you can expect more out of this printer other than a working 3D printer. However, the second point, uh, which is absolutely great about this printer, is the print quality. Granted that I didn't, I didn't have great print quality straight away. It took a few modifications and a bit of dialing in. But some of these prints are absolutely insanely detailed, and they're they're really, really good quality. So that impressed me even more because I was not expecting it from this price point of a printer. However, that's pretty much all the good things I can say about this printer. Yes, it's cheap and it prints well, but at what cost? The bad things are the warped parts that came along. If it wasn't for the fact that I had a heat gun, out of the box, I wouldn't have been able to use this printer. Although I could have possibly doused these in hot water and tried to warp them back in place, but that should really not be the case. The power supply, oh my God, the power supply. It kept on tripping the electricity because there's some kind of fault with it. I tried changing the wires. I made sure that it's on 220 volts. It still kept tripping the electricity. There is no loading filament function on this printer. So everything has to be done manually. You have to push literally the filament all the way down into the nozzle to pull it out it's the same thing there is the, the preheating is just set to one temperature the menu can be quite a bit confusing the same with the auto level it's a bit confusing at first but you'll get there eventually so i'm not really going to fold that because Strictly speaking, I think with every auto bed leveling, at, at least every printer has something particular that makes it maybe a bit more complicated than the others. The acrylic, it's, it really makes it a bit flimsy. To a certain extent, it makes it so flimsy that it actually warps the acrylic before it warps or adjusts the uh, aluminum heat bed due to tension. So if you tighten it too much, it starts warping the acrylic from the bottom rather than actually leveling the bed. And that, that was actually kind of funny. The last thing is the wiring. Everything is exposed. Cable management is, is difficult to get right. You probably could with a lot of time and effort, but uh, once again, at this price point, it's, it wasn't really worth it for me to actually just go through all that trouble. And now the ugly. Um, my experience with the seller of this printer. I ordered an ANET, got a Tronxy. Sorry, I ordered an ANET A8, just to be specific for this example. And I got a Tronxy. I sent an email to the shipper and I told them that they send me a Tronxy. They sent it to me with warped parts and they sent it to me with a faulty power supply. Their first response was, do you know how to auto bed level? Do you have instructions? 
So I reply to them that the instructions and the build is not an issue. The issue is that you sent me a Trunxy when I ordered an ANET A8. Their reply was, we are sorry, but we are just an ANET supplier. <laughs> and, and my blood started a bit boiling over there, you know, my Mediterranean temper. So I got back to them, I told them, great, in that case, if you're an ANET supplier, please send me the actual ANET rather than a Trunxy. They replied to me once again, this time by sending me instructions of the ANET A6. <laughs> now, what I got out of this experience, especially from this particular seller, I'm not going to say it's every seller on AliExpress, it's this particular seller. I'm quite sure that he was understanding what I'm saying, and I'm quite positive that they kind of treat you like you're a bit of an idiot, like they're not understanding you, just so you can give up. I opened a claim with AliExpress. I've sent him the video of the live build. I've sent him photos. I've sent him more videos recorded at home. I've sent him the photo that was on the AliExpress site of the ANET A8 and then showed him that this is what I got. And to be honest, I don't think they're going to either refund, send an ANET A8, or possibly even send the power supply replacement because they seem to be quite protective of their sellers. So if you're gonna go for anything on AliExpress, always take it with a pinch of salt. Personally, if you want to buy an ANET A8, I would, I would rather go to Gearbest because I know that they're strictly one of the leading distributors of ANET in China. If you want a trunk seat like this, however, I will link in the uh, description an actual seller of trunk seat, not one that advertises an ANET and sends you a trunk seat. So that is it. That is my official review of the trunk p 802 and May. My, what a mouthful. <laughs> Do I recommend this printer? Yes and no. I honestly wouldn't recommend it to someone who's just starting out. I wouldn't recommend it as a first printer to someone who wants to build a kit. I think it's a bit, it could be very complicated. You could encounter quite a few issues which you wouldn't know how to deal with and you might want to give up. As a second printer, however, something you want to tinker with, something you might want to upgrade and play around with or possibly use for parts, yes, by all means, go for it. I would still suggest just as a precaution, make sure you have a proper power supply as a backup. But other than that, yes, I, I can't fault it. Once you put the time, energy and patience into this, it can produce some really, really great results. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. If you're interested in purchasing this printer or an actual ANET A8, I will leave links in the description. If you buy through those links, you'll be supporting me in this channel because I would get a very small percentage as a kickback. And in the meantime, happy making, guys.